God always takes those who know him to be with him in heaven. God desires to bless us. He desires to give good gifts to his children. That's God's way. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to do it right now because you may be one of, one of those victims going forward. I'm giving you a prophesy right now that there will be those who think that they have another tomorrow and that there will be not another minute for them. Hello, my family. Randy Kay here. We have had so many natural and unnatural disasters that have occurred in our world. All of them represent a ticking clock. That is the end of times. Now, I'm going to be citing a number of prophetic statements that have been made that have come to pass. And I'll cite proof of them in videos that we have produced and show you excerpts from those videos that testify of what we are seeing in part. Now, fairly recently, we saw dramatic and devastating hurricanes along the southeast uh, part of the United States of America. The first one was named Helene, and that devastated uh, the southeast and parts of North Carolina were so devastated that there were several deaths that were reported as a result. It was the uh, size and uh, strength of a hurricane that had not been seen for some time. But what made it even more, uh, more kind of impactful in terms of the uh, timing of that hurricane was the following subsequent hurricane named Milton, which devastated much of Florida that came rushing through at record, record uh, streams that caused devastation. And these hurricanes uh, were almost back to back in terms of their effect, causing, causing billions of dollars of devastation, more importantly, uh, the loss of lives and the loss of livelihoods. And so we pray for those who have been affected by those hurricanes that indeed uh, they would uh, recover and that the Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, would bless uh, those affected by these hurricanes with uh, uh, finances, with uh, livelihoods, uh, with um, rebuilding or building new or whatever is needed food-wise and otherwise. And for those who have lost loved ones, we pray for your comfort, uh, knowing that uh, God always takes those who know him to be with him in heaven. So um, there's that old saying, and it's rather crass, but I'll say it anyway, that, uh, that our loss is God's gain. And uh, the loss of our loved ones uh, that go to heaven is their gain. But our loss remains for the loved ones that we have lost because we are left in this world to remember uh, what we cannot have on this earth in relationship to them. What I'm going to be talking about now is prophecy. And I'm going to be talking about prophecy as it relates to the end of times because the writing is on the proverbial wall. It's very clear. We've talked about many messages now that we've shown you uh, that are correlated with the Bible in terms of the wars we are seeing in the Middle East, in terms of the hurricanes and earthquakes that we have seen of late, in terms of all of the natural disasters. We began speaking uh, in April of 2024 about the eclipse which uh, had occurred on April 8th, which marked uh, the southeastern or middle southeastern section uh, crisscrossing across the eclipse with what occurred in, uh, in 2017. 
which was another eclipse which uh, crossed through uh, the towns of Salem. And the 2024 eclipse passed through seven cities called Nineveh. We talked about how the eclipse through those cities of Nineveh, and we went through a, a lengthy uh, teaching about the prophetic uh, meaning of the 2024 eclipse, was a call to repentance, a call to repentance to the United States of America, specifically uh, for those who had turned away from God, who had adopted uh, some belief or non-belief in the God of Jesus Christ. And, and we said that if that repentance did not come about, that we would see the results of that, not of God's making or choosing, but of our making for having defied God and having not turned back to him and repented uh, collectively, both first as a church body, those of us who profess Jesus as Lord and Savior, but also as a nation who had uh, denied uh, God's uh, authority in our life, in our nation, uh, for those who continue to, uh, to promote uh, whatever sin is incumbent upon our, sin, our country now, and that includes crime, it includes um, terrorism that has crossed uh, into the United States, primarily from our southern border, it includes uh, drug uh, usage and selling. It includes uh, the trafficking of youth, which has occurred in the United States at an epic rate. It includes uh, the taking of innocent lives of the unborn. All of these things have occurred to an increasing extent in 2024. So has the United States heeded God's call to repent and to turn from our wicked ways, as it says in Second Chronicles 7.14, that if we earnestly repent and turn from our wicked ways, that God will heal our land? I don't think that has happened to a large extent. So what happens is God, as I've talked about in other messages, essentially uh, removes his shield of protection. You see, there are two dynamic forces in the world. There's one uh, force that is of the enemies of God, which uh, intend destruction. And those uh, forces of God, those angels and those who are followers of uh, Jesus Christ, uh, who are reflecting God's will to pour out blessings because God desires to bless us. He desires to give good gifts to his children. That's God's way. Uh, the destruction we see is not God's way. The destruction we see is basically humankind having its way in exception to God. And therefore, what happens as a consequence to that is God removes his shield of protection. And when that happens, then these powers, principalities, these spirits of darkness, and those who are beholden, that is, those who are at the effect of these, uh, these demons and these dark uh, spiritual effects, then carry out their deeds unobstructed. And that's what we've seen. We've seen rampant crime in cities. We've seen uh, extraordinary inflation where people are living primarily today, paycheck to paycheck. We're seeing economic devast devastation. We're seeing uh, devastation in terms of drug addiction, trafficking, as I said, and all of these evils that we're seeing manifested in our world today as a result of not having turned toward God. And this started with the church. I have to say, my beloved church and God's truly beloved church that the church had been called to step up uh, and to, uh, to unify in Christ, become one body as it should be, which is why we created my family, to help unify the body of Christ. Well, that hasn't quite happened, uh, but there are uh, what I call the remnant church. Uh, the remnant church is a name that we've called for those who have stepped up, who have, and we saw it at the Heaven Encounters 2024 conference, uh, when we saw the outpouring of uh, 
the presence of God when we see uh, those in revivals in different uh, churches that have really stepped up and said, you know, I'm going to create a line in this uh, in the sand uh, the enemy cannot cross, and I'm going to stand up for Christ. I'm going to help feed the poor. I'm going to help clothe those who have no clothes. I'm going to pray for the lost. And all of those things which God calls us to do, uh, to, to visit the sick, uh, to, to visit widows, to visit those in prisons, uh, those are uh, the people who are stepping up, and God is going to bless you for doing it. I want to play for you a uh, video excerpt of when I prophesied of the hurricanes uh, that we have seen, the devastation thereof. I'm going to show you this uh, excerpt of what I uh, spoke out on May 19th of 2024. And of course, the hurricanes have happened fairly recently, but I declared at that time that there would indeed be record hurricanes that would hit the southeast and here's that clip but the divide in america through culture politics and anti-semitism may literally literally be reflected in an impending earthquake if america does not repent and side with the edicts of god instead of siding with the leftist wokeism and anti-semitism in America. Now, another potential consequence of rebellion, rebellion against God may be reflected in the 2024 hurricane season, which is likely to be the most severe since 2020 and could even exceed 2020's record breaking activity as recorded in the National Hurricane Center and Central Pacific Hurricane Center's annual Tropical Cyclone Reports, abbreviated TCRs. So, the United States may be facing a record destruction from the hurricanes of this year. Now, we've talked about the consequence of not following after God. And I'm not saying that the people in the Southeast certainly deserved what happened. No, they did not deserve what happened. But when the people of the world looked at the devastation that occurred, what they saw was that the effect on the people of the United States of America could go one of two ways. Either we could pitch in and help those who were at the effect of the devastation and the hurricane. And in fact, that happened with Samaritan's Purse. Christians, by large numbers, uh, started pitching in. It was the Christian population, by the way, who stepped in to help those who were devastated by the hurricane. Largely, it was those who uh, were believers in Jesus Christ. Statistically, when we look at Samaritan's Purse and other Christian ministries that really stepped up, you know, and helped. But I want to tell you that the devastation, when you think you're exempt from what happened in the Southeast, uh, that we're not exempt. I live in California, and we're going to see earthquakes in California. We're going to see uh, uh, that crisscrossing of what I talked about in the eclipse between 2017 and, and 2024, we're going to see that area within the Midwest, which will also face its devastation. Now, when I say these things, I don't want those to happen, and I don't want to, I don't want to declare a thing that must happen. Uh, I will declare a thing that is going to happen unless, and here's the caveat, unless we repent, we turn from our wicked ways, and as a body, I'm speaking to the church now, that we step up, and we come together, we come together, and we are truly operating as one body in Christ, and that we are operating in the fullness of the Spirit. That is, we are not obstructing a move of the Holy Spirit, but we are encouraging that through praise, worship, and allowing God to have his way, even when we have to disrupt services, even when we have to go beyond our comfort zone, right? Right? 
even when we have to do things apart from uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock or whatever it happens to be, that we actually are following the leading of the Holy Spirit to what is new and fresh because God is speaking a freshness to his church. God is speaking something new to his church, not to be caught in the stead and the tried and true and what's what's been just traditional in the past, but to really break through those barriers to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if it means going out on a Sunday instead saying, church, we're going to go out and we're going to feed the poor or we're going to go out and we're going to help the hurricane victims or whatever it happens to be. That is what God is saying, that we have to get beyond our comfort zone, that we have to get beyond our boundaries of what we are used to be doing, because if we're not going to step up and do the new, then we will be at the effect of the old and what is prophesied as the destructive ways of God saying, okay, if you're not going to follow my way, then I'm going to lift that shield of protection and then the enemy will have his way. And that's the enemy's had his way for far too long as God is saying, step up my church step up people and when I say people I mean people who need to not only repent but also for those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior to get with it and now confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior enough is enough of 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 just paying him lip service or not paying him any service at all if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you need to do it right now because you may be one of, one of those victims going forward. I'm giving you a prophesy right now that there will be those who think that they have another tomorrow and that there will be not another minute for them. Beloved of the Lord Jesus Christ, much of what we're seeing prophetically in the world today is focused on Israel. Israel is at the epicenter of Bible prophecy and the end times prophecy. The Bible is loaded with scripture about the end times, hundreds of verses about the end times. And why does God do that? Because he wants to know, know, wants us to know, excuse me, when the writing is on the wall, as they say. And the writing is on the wall today. I spoke in this video clip I'm going to share with you. I, I went through chronologically times when the United States of America and others in the world had supported Israel. And then there was a blessing upon the nations who supported Israel. But I also went in that chronological order of things when those nations, and namely in the United States especially, did not support Israel and reap the consequences thereof. Those times when America abandoned Israel were the times when there was natural disaster. I think you know what I'm getting at. The United States of America has not supported Israel enough. In fact, we're seeing a tolerance or have seen a tolerance of anti-Semitism in the United States. It's wrong. It should not be tolerated when it intimidates the Jewish people or anybody else on campuses and other public places. But it has been tolerated. In fact, it's been condoned because it is not been addressed as it should be. So what happens because we have not supported Israel and we have seen a condemnation or actually a, uh, a threatening of Jews and anti-Semitism as it, as I even prophesied earlier this year, that we would see an increase in anti-Semitism. I prophesied that in February, that we would see an increase in anti-Semitism before anything happened in Israel on October 7th. I prophesied that in an earlier message that I gave when I talked about the fact that the, the, the effects of the Holocaust and, and what was the anti-Semitism that we saw then was still in place in our world today. But the seeds that caused the extermination of countless number of Jewish people, 
The seeds, beloved, were of Satan and his minions. And those seeds have been planted today. Those seeds have taken root today in our world. And I'm going to play you a vignette of a situation that was an, is analogous to what we're seeing today when Israel was not fully supported by the United States. When there was a call, a call to, to come to some peace agreement, when there were hostages and, and attacks on Israel still occurring, when there were bombs being levied by, from Iran and from Hezbollah and from Hamas, and still there were calls from leaders within the United States who said, I want you to just call a, a, a truce. Let, let these enemies have their way. Let them levy bombs or do, uh, you know, the massacres as, as happened in October 7th. Just let it go on. You just need to, you know, you know if, if, if Israel calls a truce and says that they will lay down their weapons, there will be no more Israel. And this vignette I'm going to show you is a similar time that is analogous to when we've seen here the effect of the hurricanes and natural disasters that are subsequent to the United States of America not supporting Israel. Here's that uh, here's that vignette that I'll show you from uh, what I what I showed the parallel of times of a blessing or times of God lifting His protection based on a support of uh, God's people in Israel. All right, let's take March 2011, because in that year, just a few months before the Syrian civil war erupted in March 2011, the Obama administration offered the Assad regime an Israeli withdrawal from, again, we're back to the Golan Heights, a withdrawal from the Golan Heights in return for severing ties with Iran and Hezbollah, which of course did not occur. Uh, Hezbollah is a proxy for Iran. And the London-based Arabic uh, newspaper reported uh, that on uh, Sunday of that March 2011. Now the effect was this. It was, uh, we experienced the deadliest thunderstorm season in over 75 years with losses of $23.8 billion in 2011 dollars, that is. And then Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee caused minor wind damage during that period. Major flooding in northeastern U.S., severe spring flooding events in the Midwest and Great Plains. And I'm going to show you another vignette of another prophecy that I made on August 2nd of 2022, which was a coming storm. Now, I have paralleled what happens in heaven, in the supernatural, to what happens on earth. They're very analogous. I wrote Heaven Storm, the book, and I wrote my witness about, in that heaven storm book, I wrote about my witness of the storm in heaven. And, and when heaven storms, there is an impartation to our world because there's a, a veil of very closeness from heaven to earth. We really are not far removed from heaven. Heaven is very close to our world. There's a veil, as the Bible talks about, between the two. And what I'm going to show you is a statement that I made uh, over two years ago about the storm and that we would see the storm coming and that that storm was being poured out from heaven in a similar way, and I want to. I want before I show that vignette to you. I want to. I want to again express this: that God does not desire that anyone be at the effect of any destruction whatsoever, and that's not God's heart. That's not God's heart. However, there is a consequence, 
as there is in this life to us not following God's way, being obedient to what he tells us we must do. And the consequence of that is the lifting of his protection. That's when we see the consequence of our own sin. And it happens in the natural in families, right? When families are, when the, when a parent says, uh, you know, you, you can't go, you know, party at so-and-so's house because, because, you know, they're, they're, they're drug dealing. Let's say that scenario. And, and that, 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 that child or that young adult says, uh, you know, I'm going to forget you, you know, mom, dad, I'm going to go there anyway. And what happens? And it's just happened before. We've had people on our show who have lost loved ones to fentanyl. And, and that, that child goes and, and there's a party and there are pills, you know, in a bowl and they just take a pill. First time we had a, a young football player who went to one of those parties, defied his, his parent and took one fentanyl and that overdose from it being poison killed that, that young person. It was because of a defiance, a disobedience to the parent. Same dynamic happens with God. It's not that God wants any harm to happen. It's just that there's going to be a consequence. And when we don't listen to God, there's a consequence that indeed the storm will pour forth. Here's that vignette that I declared over two years ago now. We know that a storm naturally that is in the in nature can clear the air after the storm. But then there's the destruction that a storm can enact or that can cause. That storm that is coming, beloved, is one that will bring some destruction. I'm going to switch gears here a little bit because I've given a lot of messages now and you can go back and listen to them. But one of those was on artificial intelligence. And I gave some prophetic statements around artificial intelligence of what would happen. Some of those have been played out in the technology as we keep up up to date on what's happening technologically as as it references AI. Artificial intelligence is not in and of itself innately wrong or evil. It's just that, as I, as I have said before, it can and will be used by God's enemies for a destructive person, purpose. A person by the name of Klaus Schwab is the founder and executive and chairman of the World Economic Forum, WEF. In my message at the beginning of this year, when I uh, talked about the prophecies for 2024, when I talked about those prophecies of 2024, I talked about the fact that there is a movement afoot for a one world economy and a one world religion. Well, the World Economic Forum which is, uh, I think recently, uh, Klaus Schwab has decided to step down in some other role, but I believe he's still acting as chairman of that and founder, certainly, of that organization. Um, uh, president Biden, as vice president, has spoken before them. He's been called a supporter of the World Economic Forum. And uh, the current uh, uh, candidate... Vi current Vice President Kamala Harris also has uh, been an ad hoc supporter of, uh, of this movement, basically this economic movement, to look at ways in which uh, the economy and the economic systems can be combined into a one-world economy. That's what the forum is about. Now, uh, a little bit of background about Klaus Schwab, his father was uh, Eugene or Eugen Schwab, uh, German, 
individual who managed Escher, Escher, I'm trying to pronounce this in my, <laughs> I learned German, pronounce it correctly, Escher Weiss Ravensburg factory. He was over that, he managed that factory, which supplied uh, military equipment to the equipment to the Third Reich during the World War II. He, he, he was a part of that managing, and that factory was awarded the quote-unquote nationalist socialist model company, end of quote, um, and so the socialism and World War II was the goal. That's how uh, Hitler and Nazism, as it was as it was growing, was developed as a form of socialism. That's why socialism is not of God, because socialism is a is a it's a consolidation of power within a few people. Uh, and that's what happened, which really led to uh, World War II and, and to Nazism, Nazism specifically, and the uh, and Hitler gaining power. So socialism uh, is is a part of what we we're seeing today. It is not of God. Socialism is putting power into the hands of a few. And power corrupts. We know that. Power does indeed corrupt. That's the corruptible nature of humankind. Well, the goal of the uh, UN Forum is what is called, this is the United Nations, it's called the Sustainable Development Goals that they developed to be implemented by the year 2030. Why is the year 2030 specific to prophecy? It is because they have these forces, these socialistic forces, which want to assemble a one world economy and a one world religion are targeting by 2030 to implement many of those programs which would in fact remove the US dollar as the world currency and create a one world currency. Now, also, as I've showed you in the Middle East, we have a building in the United Emirates of three uh, religious centers representing three major religions, Judaism and Islam, and I believe Hinduism? I'm not sure of that. It may be Christianity. Anyway, it's about the consolidation into a one-world religion, an ecumenical religion. Three buildings house a Catholic church, a mosque, and a synagogue. Pope Francis signed the governing documents of this entity called the Document of Human Fraternity. The attempt was to demonstrate liberalism of these three major religions that represented a growing interfaith movement in the world today. So this consolidation, this socialism that consolidates power into the hands of a few is happening. And AI, as I have said in prior messages, specifically a vignette that I will show you, is being used to consolidate this economy, religion, to basically force people then to adhere to a one world economy which would enable the implementation of potentially implants or some means or devices to regulate economic behavior on the part of individuals and humans. That what, what used to sound futuristic is happening today. So let me show you this um, AI tool for centralization, which I've spoken about prophetically, which would occur and now has occurred to a large extent with a goal in a few short years, 
2030 of being completed. Here's that vignette that I'll show you. 2030 is the projected year of the UN to complete their sustainable development goals. Now the next vignette I'm going to show you is how AI is being used to create a one world religion to basically reveal the God that everyone should worship. And we know from Bible prophecy who that one person is. It's the Antichrist. Here's one an AI did write. It said, and let, quote, and let thy companies deliver thee, but will with mine own arm save them even unto this land from the kingdom of heaven. End of quote. And AI said that, rewriting the Bible. An AI that is all powerful, beloved, in the next 25 or so years could decide to write a similar AI Bible for humans to follow, one that matches its own collective intelligence by integrating other religions into a composite religion, a one world religion. It might tell you what to do each day or where to travel or how to live your life and what God you should worship. And there will be 10, and I'm speaking to you now in a prophetic way that is confirmed not just by myself, but others. There will be 10 from this one world uh, economy and religion, one world system, which will regulate human behavior, there will be a realignment of nations. So there will be 10 nations, if you will. I don't know if they'll be called nations. There will be 10 regions, let's say. Those 10 regions has been talked about in the book of Revelation as the as the uh, 10 horns, that is the 10 regions or nations will aggregate based on their proximity to one to another. So for example, Canada, the United States, and Mexico will form the Americas region. And we'll see these coming together of these regions into 10 regions. Those are the 10 horns referenced in the book of Revelation. Now, as this happens from this socialistic movement of the World Economic Forum and also the movement of the One World Econo Ecumenical Movement, which is going on today, which brings religions of all types together, to worship as one with one religion, as this happens, then we will see an emergence of the Antichrist. And that an Antichrist will come from the European Union, which has already been formed to a large extent. So that will be one of those regions. Now many have conjectured, conjectured conjectured, excuse me, <laughs> that it's going to come from Rome. But I, I, I don't believe that. I believe that that region in Europe, the one who will come forth, will actually come out of Germany. And that person will not have a thick German accent, will be fluent in English, but will have a German kind of pedigree, if you will. And this is the remnant of what we saw in Nazism and Hitler that will resurrect then the system we're already seeing, uh, who was the, the leader of uh, Merkel in Germany, who adopted this one world economic form system. And others, obviously, in other parts of the world have adopted that as well. So we will see that. And, uh, and here is that, uh, what I'm going to show you. 
is what I prophesied 12 months ago. 12 months ago, I prophesied that the nations and even some in the U.S. and Western world would turn against Israel after the October 7th, 2023 massacre. And I said, uh, quote, at that time, we are on the verge of convergence, end of quote. I said, I use that term, we are on the verge of convergence. I said that there, there after October 7th, when everyone seemed to be rallying behind Israel, you know, upon this terrible uh, atrocity that had occurred, that I said that the media would start to turn against and other institutions would start would start to turn against and people would start to turn against Israel, call it basically the bad guy in all of this. And that there would be a we would be at that point on the verge of convergence. That is the convergence of these powers that are happening and what the convergence, what will precipitate that, kind of light the flame for that happening, is a peace agreement. A peace agreement that will be formed as a coming together of nations, of regions, under the banner of these various regional unions that will occur. Okay, here's that message that I gave that I'll play for you the vignette of. We are on the verge of convergence of nations that have heretofore been friendly to Israel. And in the media, in the media, beloved, you should expect many to start turning against Israel during this, these periods of attacks and warfare that is waged against the terrorists. Now recently, as it relates to politics and the U.S. election, of course, there's been uh, an assassination attempt against Donald J. Trump uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania. Recently, he uh, went back to Butler, Pennsylvania. And at that time, uh, shortly thereafter, actually, uh, there was another assassination attempt. Um, and that happened on September 15th. And I had prophesied, prophesied a month and a half prior to September 15th that there would be another attempt on Donald Trump's life. Now, the Bible says we, we prophesy in part, we know in part, so I heard Las Vegas, and then I heard assassination, another assassination attempt against Donald J. Trump. And by the way, in that message, I said there would be a subsequent one attempt in Washington, D.C. I heard Las Vegas, and I assumed, incorrectly or correctly, I'm not sure, but I believe I heard Las Vegas, and then I heard another assassination attempt. Donald J. Trump was staying at his hotel in Las Vegas, the Trump Tower in Las Vegas, prior to going to Florida where this second attempt would occur. There will be another attempt, an assassination attempt. And I've been praying about it and thinking, Lord, did you plant the Las Vegas and coming from Las Vegas and the second attempt? I'm not going to extrapolate too much on that. But here's what I will say. That there will be other attempts that will occur. Um, and I'm also going to say that there will be a surprise on election day uh, in November. November 6th, I believe it is, of 2024. And as I've prophesied before the 467 days until good or evil that uh, surprise on election day will translate by Christmas into what I believe is likely to be an outpouring of good and not evil 
because I see a turning around now. I didn't see that at the time that I initiated that prophecy. I see it now of a turning around. And um, not all prophets are, are right, including yours truly, by the way. Uh, we're living in the, a, the, the age of grace post the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's not like the Old Testament prophets where if they didn't get something right, it was like off with their head because they were speaking directly from the Lord a word, and so the Lord was speaking through the prophets and through the priests. But here, in this world in which we live, in the age of grace, for those who are in Christ, they have the Holy Spirit within them, and that's the temple, and so he, God can speak directly to his people who are born anew through Christ. And that means that you can prophesy, that he can speak to you what, what you know to be right in your heart. And so that's why those who speak prophecy today are speaking it in a different way. They're speaking it in a way, yes, so that can be either truth-telling or foretelling, but in a way that is different, in a way that is not let's say, full, as foolproof as in the Old Testament. I'm going to read to you uh, 2 Peter, and we're going to close on this, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. And it speaks directly as to what is going on today, and then I'll wrap this up. Here's what those verses say. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new earth and a new heaven, a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. There's a lot packed into those verses. One of which is that he's saying that we need to be prepared. God is saying we need to be prepared. You know, the writing is on the proverbial wall. We're seeing the things that are in the Bible bearing out at a rapid pace. And there's an acceleration of that pace. So we need to be prepared because he will come like a thief in the night. And what will happen is there will be a rapid unfolding of events. As I, as I actually also prophesied previously that we would be, and I prophesied this about two and a half years ago, that now we would see a wrapping, uh, rapid, excuse me, unfolding of events. That what took decades uh, or kind of end times prophecy fulfillment would happen within a short period of time. And we're seeing that. We're seeing basically every prophecy foretelling the end of times having been fulfilled. And uh, that means that we need to be prepared. And that uh, God can come anytime to claim us. But also, God can bear out what will be for those who go through the tribulation. And I believe we're in the pre-tribulation period of time right now. Through the tribulation. As you know, the forces, the forces, the powers that I've talked about, their goal is 2030. I'm not saying prophetically that that's going to be the demarcation. I'm saying their goal is 2030 to have this world, one world system in, in place. That's a short time away. That means that we could see the surfacing of and I believe he lives today, the Antichrist. And he will be a popular figure. And he will propose peace. 
peace for Israel and a peace settlement between Israel and Iran, Russia and China, and the Middle East. And that will happen soon. You know, we have to start thinking days, not decades. We have to start thinking more immediate years and not sometime in the long, distant future. So that should create a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency that we need to draw close to God. We need to do the things that God calls us to do, to help those who are in need of help, to return good for evil, to draw closer, to know God's word, to worship him. And when he tells us in our, in our spirit to do a thing that we know to be good, that we need to do it and not postpone it, because there should be a sense of urgency now and following after God. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you don't have a promise of another moment. And I've given eulogies for young people who thought they would live for a long, long time, and they didn't. I, I, have, I have spoken with those who have lost loved ones and, and they thought that they had more time and they didn't. And I've spoken with those, of course, a number of them, many, who have died clinically and visited heaven or even hell. So you need to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Invite him into your heart to take control over your life. And when you do that, surrendering to Jesus Christ, inviting him to having confessed your sins and asking forgiveness for those sins, you're born anew. You're a new creation. You are destined for heaven. You are destined for heaven. And when, when this world and heaven's small age disappear, and those are burned away, and they will, all of these things will disappear. We can see how quickly war can just devastate areas. We can see how natural devastations and hurricanes and the like can devastate areas, and that will happen. You will be secure because of this great news I'm about to share with you. And that is that if you're in Christ, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take care and God bless.